Bible says, and the Lord shall strength send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. And when the Holy Spirit was being commissioned to leave Zion to go into the earth, he was commissioned with a policy. Rule thou in the midst of your enemies. He didn't say cohabit with your enemies. He didn't say just look for how to. <laughs> and that's why when he came on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says he filled all the place where they were sitting. He was not coming to cohabit. He was not coming to manage. He was not coming to find a space to patch. He filled the place because he was coming with a dominion mandate. Oh my God. Yes, a dominion mandate. This mandate is a governmental mandate. Governance. Provide governance in the midst of your enemies. Establish order in the midst of your enemies. For some of us that are into law enforcement here, you know what it takes to establish order. It takes force. That's why the kingdom of God allows violence. Because order would not be established by sweet talk. No. We must know what it takes to move the hand of God. You know, maybe because of my background, I can tell you this for free. Witches will never let go until something stronger than them shows up. They are compelled to let go. They don't just, they don't, they don't reason. Okay, let's dialogue. Let's talk these things through. That's not how you deal with witches. Rule in the midst of your enemies. So that's the mandate that the Holy Ghost was sent with into the earth. It's a governmental mandate. It's a rulership mandate. It's a mandate to set up order. Are you here? I say, are you here? So when we look at the statistics and you begin to see how marriages are not working, it's a suggestion of the fact that there is some form of dis disalignment in the land. It's, it's a suggestion, if you, you check the crime rate, check all those indices, you begin to see that this is not a reflection of what is obtainable in the heavens because uh, what we are seeking to establish upon the earth is a prototype that has been established already in the heavens and uh, this is not the kind of disorder that is obtainable in the heavens uh, anytime we begin to see disorder it means that uh, the measure of the spirit of god at work is minimal so other civilizations have greater influence in those territories much more than the kingdom of God and the spirit of God. Please help me preach to your neighbor. The spirit of God does not come to manage. It doesn't come to cohabit. It's not looking for a small space to patch. He comes to rule. Hallelujah. <laughs> We went on a crusade to a very dark place. In fact, the territory I'm speaking about, uh, you can't drive to that place. You know, when you hear uh, what is written in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, for instance, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. That's what I'm talking about. That's one of those places they call the uttermost parts. That's where the road finishes. The road, there's... Oh, my God. I know you don't know that here because you have, you have tarred roads. There are places on earth where your uh, Ford F-150, you pack it, you come down and put on jungle boots, and, and, and you will trek for long.
So I've done that a few times. So we went to one of those places. And obviously when you go that far, you see uh, they have their own religious system. And they have a witch doctor that is like the priest of the land. So our evangelistic efforts was not so bright. However, the priest yielded to Jesus. <laughs> so we took the priest away, discipled him, trained him, taught him prayer, taught him fasting, taught him how to preach the word of God, and he came back no longer needing this altar, but he brought another altar. By the time we went to visit the second time, he had colonized the place. You will not believe me when I say this, but I'm not making it up. That priest that became our pastor was the first man in that civilization from Adam that married well, that, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. You know, in African culture, if you want to get married, you, you pay bride price, you know? I know you don't know that here. It's just to walk up to the court and say, I do. I do. <laughs> All right, so I'm telling you from the African perspective, you pay something called bride price to the custodians of the lady. So that guy was the first guy that paid bride price in that community. Prior to that time, if you see a lady that you like, you just, you steal her. <laughs> Plot a graph and an ambush. Then after having three children, you now come and say, your daughter is not lost though. Your daughter has been doing very well with us. So that guy was the first guy to pay bright price. Are you with me? When the chief of the village heard that somebody paid bright price, he, that's how he came. That was the gospel that made him give his life to give his life to Christ. That so a different culture had come into the realm because the Holy Ghost was not coming to cohabit. The Holy Spirit was coming to rule. We didn't know that his, his liver was, is it liver? Yes, his liver was infected. We didn't know that. And it, it became very bad. And the Lord did not rescue him, even though we prayed for him. So we lost him. We lost him after four years of active ministry. On the day of his burial, many more people found reason to follow the God, he said. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. So the enemies of Christ are everywhere, but the Spirit of God is coming with the mandate of government. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. Verse 3. Verse 3 says, Thy people shall be willing. Meaning that the Holy Ghost cannot do the job alone. The Holy Ghost will need to partner with his people. Notice that this is a communication coming from the Father to the Son. And the Father is telling the Son that thy people, that you will have a people. And your people will be willing in the day of thy power. The day of thy power he spoke about was the day of Pentecost. That you will have a people. And thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power in the beauties of holiness the word holiness means separation now stay with me are you with me now this is the idea 
The only way it, it must interest you, I know, um, I know you know, you know, so I don't need to tell you. But it will interest you to know that uh, this world was not designed for spirits. This is our own frame of reference. It was designed for three dimensional entities. When Jesus resurrected from the dead and appeared with his glorified body to his disciples, in the book of Luke chapter 24 verse 39, they were not sure he was the one because they had never seen anyone rise from the dead before. So he had to pr provide evidence that he was the one that he had risen from the dead. Jesus said, behold my hands and my feet. Behold. The reason why you can behold is because you occupy space. I can behold you because you occupy space. So Jesus said, behold my hands and my feet. Jesus said, handle me and see. The reason why I can handle you is because you have matter. You contain matter. I can handle. You have substance. Are you still with me? So, that, behold, occupy space, handle me as matter. And that event took place in real time. So this is a realm of time. This is a realm of space. This is a realm of matter. It's not a realm for spirit. If a spirit is going to be effective in this realm, it will come because you gave such a spirit permission to operate here. You are not with me. Do you know what an altar is? You do. How, how do you know? <laughs> I thought all you know are computers and, and, uh, and tech. And... There's an ancient technology to bring spirits into places. And that's the technology of altars. Prayer is earthly permission for heavenly interference. You will need to exercise priesthood in order to legitimize the invasion of heaven. You will need to exercise priesthood in order for God to be just, God to um, have the much needed permission to operate in the realm of man. The Bible says that people shall be willing in the day of what? Of thy power. In the beauties of their separation. In the beauties of their separation. If you want to see the beauty of the manifestation of a spirit being, are you there? What you need to do is to separate yourself onto that spirit being completely. You will become an advertisement for what the spirit can do with a subject that is under his hand. For many of us, it is difficult to read the epistle of God that is coming from your life because you are not separated completely to God. When you become separated completely to God, it will be easy to discern what the Spirit of God is in your life. It will be easy to discern. We can, we can identify you not according to who you are in the flesh, not according to your training and your education. We can identify you based on your uniqueness, in the way the Spirit of God has decided to express himself through your vessel. Are you with me? When you become separate unto him, that's when we will know who is a prophet among us. Because as you separate yourself unto him, if it's his will for your life is to be a prophet, we will see that dimension manifest without any form of ambiguity. Are you there? Thy people shall be with you in the day of thy power in the beauties of their separation since the Holy Ghost is coming with a mandate from heaven he needs to partner with the man but the man he must partner with must be willing to separate himself unto the Holy Ghost there will be many influences many philosophies trying to capture your attention but the best that God wants to do through your life will be revealed when you decide that I'm going to be stuck with God and only God. It's only God, only the Spirit of God will use my mind to think. 
only the Spirit of God will give me directives that I will obey. The flesh cannot give me a directive that will be serious enough to me to obey. Are you there? It means I'm separated. When you, when you buy a laptop computer, your laptop computer is capable of playing host to so many applications and software. But you decide that your own computer will only hold one software. It is capable of so much. That's how you are capable of so much. You can become a criminal this night. And you, the intelligence to accomplish it will come out of nowhere. Demons will be available to provide technical support and whispers. Oh my. Oh my. Hallelujah. You are capable of that. But you decide that I'm going to be separate. Only one software will operate me. I'll give perspective to only one influence. And that's why his people must be willing. Every time there is a, an argument, there is, there is a deficiency of willingness on the part of his people to go the length that the Holy Ghost wants to go. An incompatibility situation is established and the move of God begins to wane. That people shall be willing. The point is this. Are we willing? You know when you begin to walk with the Holy Ghost, then you discover that the Holy Spirit is, is a jealous God. There are times it becomes, it starts frowning at you because of your commitment to your cell phone. You begin to feel somehow. He was expecting you to give him some time. He's more possessive than a woman. Holy Ghost. My God. If you can walk with the Holy Ghost, you can walk with, you can walk with your wife. If you've not found the Holy Ghost, you, 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 oh my God, your journey will be difficult. You will need a lot of prayers. Because the Holy Ghost will demand from you. You just got back from work. You are looking for something to eat. And you begin to hear the signal. You need to stand before me. You, it's a feeling. That thing is a feeling. It's a communication that is built into your system. You, you experience it. It's not as if you hear it. And many times we do not separate ourselves to him when he's calling us. Because we are not willing. You feel it's important for you to touch the computer a little and you just summarize the office work. You feel it's more important for you to get into the kitchen and bring out the fryers. Because you like hearing that sound. <laughs> so many things. Even Satan himself will deploy distraction so that you will not be separated unto him. And when you are not separated, the, the beauty is cut off. The beauty. The separation of your life to him is supposed to produce a beauty. Oh my. Oh my. You know, I told you the anointing is, is raging. I'm just containing myself. Oh my God. Oh my God. If we get into that anointing thing here, we'll use up all the time doing anointing. Because there is a beauty. Yes. There is evidence to show that a man has separated himself to God. There is a beauty that comes out of his life. There is a burning. There is, there is an illumination that comes out of his life that you cannot find in Harvard. When a generation begins to lose the beauty, it's because they are not willing to be separate to the spirit that was dispatched from heaven. He has come with all his power. He has come with all his grace. But there's nobody to possess. Nobody, no vessel to possess. The move of God wanes. It will not wane in our time. Yeah. I don't know how many of you sitting here today, you woke up one Saturday morning and say, okay, I don't have work today. No need to open my computer. We won't be having Zoom meetings with the executive. And you decided to walk into your prayer room and you switch your cell phone off and throw it somewhere I know you do you know that red button on your phone 
that's where they switch it off i know you don't know anymore <laughs> it takes half a government to switch that to those are the idols that satan builds around us so that we don't get to be separated But it's only when we are separated to him that there is a beauty. This is not the best version of your life. There is a beauty yet to be revealed. If only you can separate yourself some more. Everything will be jumping at you. In fact, you want to take a fast and then you just begin to hear this voice. Vanilla yogurt in the fridge. Vanilla yogurt. Vanilla. Demons will try to bend your mind just to ensure you are not separated. Just to ensure that you are not quiet enough in your soul to be able to hear the proceeding word of God that comes expressly. No beauty. Satan wants to take the beauty from our generation. He wants to get us so preoccupied that there is no one left to stand with God. Thy people shall be willing. In the day, oh, we have not started the journey and my time is almost. <laughs> in the day of thy power. In the day of thy power. I saw my father die. That was the greatest man from my village. Because of his intellectual prowess, he was given a national scholarship to study in Georgia. You know, in those days, for you to come up, you are, you are coming back home from Georgia with, with a master's degree. For the Nigeria of that time, that was a big feat. That was a mighty feat. He became the prince of our set settlement he brought a high school to our village through his influence in government so much so that when he died the principal of that school had to come give a very long speech i didn't know he had so many degrees because they wrote all his degrees the degrees he acquired when he died i didn't know my dad was that educated i said jesus Christ. bsc msc this is that 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 and unfortunately, the degrees were not transferable. <laughs> now I wish we could inherit it. It was a great ceremony, but when we left there, everybody left us. And we were alone as a family. Sometimes it's good for you to be alone. Then I realized that the only thing my parents taught me every day was about Jesus. Even though I was a religious Christian, I did not know Jesus. I was born again, but I didn't know Jesus. So my take home from the burial was that I'm going to seek. I'm going to seek for Jesus. That was when I became willing. Such willingness will make you separate. Some of this light with the spectacles. The willingness will make you separate yourself. And for many sitting here, we need the entire government of Illinois to bind you for you to be to separate yourself. We need handcuffs and chains. Because once we let you go, you will migrate from the presence of God. You've gone, become so familiar with other things that God, God is something that is part of your life. God is not something that is in the center of your existence. So we make God a part of our lives. Not, no, no, please, don't shut the light down. Don't shut it down. Give us light. I need to see the faces of people. Please, give us light. Are you there? 
for many of us, you made God a part of your life. He's not in the center. That's why when you need him, you don't find him because you have no covenant with him. You have no covenant with him. You will do something deliberate to get his attention. Are you willing? Now, if this crowd, if at the end of this event and this crowd is willing, oh my God, we have hope for America. It's just a part of your life. You show up on Sunday morning with your silk tie and you sing a hymn with piety and sanctimony. That cannot move the ants in the land. We need a man to be willing enough to separate himself. So when we came back from the burial, I decided that I was going in search of Jesus. I've never heard the God speak before. Ne never heard his word in my ears before. I didn't know how it would look like. But I decided I was going in search of him. Then I began to fast. Fasted for one month. For two months. For three months. With, with four to six hours prayer every day. Even though I was doing an active job four to six hours every day and on saturday we start 8 a.m to 4 p.m in the evening every saturday praying in tongues if you are there oh jesus show yourself that was the prayer there was no prayer but don't think you come for that meeting and then someone will say second prayer point sec no there was nothing like that you need to hear out loud tongues the type that has no respect for the bass clef, the treble clef, the, the tongues. Ah. We had separated ourselves. Just like the apostles separated themselves. That we will give ourselves to the ministry of the word of God and tables. There was an emergency. An emergency in the ministry. And the emergency was that widows were complaining. We are neglected. We are neglected as legitimate as that concern was it was not strong enough to take away their separation so we have seen your cry but we will give ourselves to the word of god we have seen your your distress but we will give ourselves to prayer we are we are sorry we we can't change our job description we can only set up another leadership that will take care of your case but your emergency cannot affect our position we are sold out we are separated we are supposed to carry a beauty and a flame of God in the territory. We can't help you. If you are willing today, something will change. Oh, you say your son is doing drugs. Hmm, you are not willing. That's just a symptom. It means he is a rebel and he needs the government of the Holy Ghost. That's all. We can make him a victim by praying for him every day. Fasting for him every Tuesday. That every Tuesday I leave, his lips, his name will be on my lips. And I'll be more trained to the presence of God. And God will give me the long life that is needed for me to see his turn around. He will become an evangelist in my, in my lifetime. What makes you think that the will of man is so powerful? Say it's on drugs now. It's part of the gang. Will you separate yourself? Are you willing? I see many people across the nations of the world come to me. They say, okay, I have a call of God. I don't know how to go about it. I say, is it truly intellectual? That's how many barricades Satan has put in place to make people afraid of separating themselves. And that's the reason why we began the 10-hour prayers. We want to expose people to God so that they will not be afraid of God again. The average man on the planet is afraid of the presence of God. I began to fast. There were days I did not eat. When I'm losing my strength completely, I will eat. I will eat a little. And I continue. And I continue. It was eight months on. And in my sleep, the Lord came and said, I can see that you are praying. 
When I woke up, I said, what's that? I've been here for eight months, and that's what you have to say to me. You know what? I was not taught. I was not taught that the moment you become serious, God sets an appointment. It sets a date and a time to meet with you. And the reason why God came to tell me that I can see that you are praying is because he saw that I was becoming discouraged. Meanwhile, I was still two months away from the schedule. So he had to come with that encounter to say, well, if you, if you, if you are going to drive to Oklahoma, it's 12 hours from, from Illinois. Am I right? So how many times, how much gas did you put in your car? How many times did you fill up? Four times. Oh, like six times. Okay. So, if you fill the car up the first time and you're going and you're almost out of gas, it doesn't mean you have arrived. <laughs> what it means is go and fill the tank up. The journey is too far for you. Many of us here, when you eventually decide to spend some time with God, you have it in your mind that according to the almighty formula, it's three days, three days of fasting. Who gave you that formula? So when you do three days and it doesn't show up, you say, you know, I did three days. and You, don't, you, are, you are not willing. You are not willing. So I continue. I continue. It took 264 days before Jesus sent his angels to me. The next time I went to press, if the time was even shorter. The more you press, the shorter the time of encounter. For me now, it's so short that if I begin to cry here, and I'll cry very soon, Jesus will come and say, what, what is the problem? What's happening? Why? What, what, what's happening to you? He will never come to you until you are willing. And your willingness will be proven by consistent prayer in search of him. And he will delay to come because he wants to see if you, if you have other options. You have other alternatives. He will delay. Two hundred and sixty-four days he shows up. No, he sent angels. The angels came and showed me power. They showed me the abilities they had. There are four, four of them. The things that the, the angels brought, they gave me those things. That's how my power ministry started. And then I realized after five years of manifesting power that I had not met Jesus. And I wanted to make Jesus to hear words from his mouth. I repented. And I went back to pray and fast. Even spiritual things can distract you. Moses said, don't give us an angel. We are tired of them. If your presence will not go with us, do not send us hands. So I continued my prayer. Until I went somewhere in the, in, in the Middle East, still praying and fasting. I entered into my hotel room the world began to change light began to come from my walls so I laid on the ground flat that was when Jesus met me for the first time I'm not talking about something I read in a book he came for 12 seconds his presence lingered in the room for 3 days If you ever hear that people call me apostle, apostle, mine is not a title. When he came that day, he sent me on an errand for the first time. There is no one that is an apostle that has not met with Jesus. If you have not met with Jesus, you are not an apostle. It's Jesus himself that comes to commission an apostle, to send an apostle on a mission. 
the brightness of his glory was so intense that I couldn't raise my head. There's a dimension of intensity that comes even a strong man like myself will begin to weep. And you don't know why you are weeping, but you can't stop weeping. Anytime you think of it, you begin to weep. Only men that know what it means to separate themselves understand that eventual beauty that begins to come through their lives. When you separate yourself, you become the advertisement for the Spirit of God. That people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness, thou hast the dew of thy youth. Why did they call the age of the youth the dew? It is not every farm that needs intense rain. There are some tender plants that need just dew to water them. So from the days of our youth, our youth should be squandered in separation. And when we do that, our lives will give forth a dew. So, so there are two things, beauty and the refreshing that comes because there is you. They are dried lands and patched lands. Demonic ter territories that have been shaped by demons. Those ones will need the dew. The dew to come and water them. Are you willing? 